Hello to everyone in the Sakai community. First, let me thank the planning committee and Wilma Hodges especially for the invitation to speak with you today about the future of the Apera Foundation. My name is Patrick Masson and I'm the executive director of the Apera Foundation. In order to help identify where Aperio might go in the future as an organization committed to increasing the adoption and development of open source and higher education, I'd like to share a few emerging trends and critical issues I see on the horizon. I'm sure everyone in this crowd already knows many of these statistics. They're all over the tech press, but interestingly, rare in the higher ed press. Here are a few others. Red Hat's State of the of enterprise software report states 90% of IT leaders are using enterprise open source today. 97% of apps and 90% of businesses use open source according to GitHub. Synopsis reported nearly 100% of ed tech software contains open source code. 72% of organizations, according to the Linux Foundation, plan to implement an open source initiative such as an open source program office. Open Logic and the Open Source Initiative's State of Open Source report claims that over 80% of organizations report an increase in the use of open source software over the last year. And according to the To Do Group, over 90% of companies use open source software internally, and almost 80% use open source in their commercial products. Open source is everywhere, and if higher ed's most trusted commercial partners rely on open source, then higher education relies on open source. And while open source software is everywhere, so are other open initiatives. Open educational resources, open textbooks, and open courses all have long histories and enjoy growing interest in colleges and universities. Broader concepts that extend the value proposition of openness through shared principles and practices of collaboration and co-creation are now common, for example, in the open science and even open work movements. This can be seen in new requirements for federal grants. For example, the National Institution, National Institute of Health and National Science Foundation, Department of Education, and others where outputs created with federal grant dollars must be made open. For example, open data, open access, open access journals, etc. Not only does this openness allow for the reuse of resources developed through federal dollars, for example, software, but the transparency of open artifacts aids in the peer review and replication of research findings. Speaking of government, new U.S. federal and European regulations and legislation will definitely impact higher education because of its dependency on and development of open source software. How will campuses become aware of and manage emergent open source projects produced by researchers as part of one of those NSF grants as federal re regulations shift, perhaps requiring certification with national cybersecurity regulations or by verifying dependencies through a software bill of materials? Open source is now becoming regulated. The Open Source Program Office first emerged in 2004 at Google. Today, OSPOs are common throughout technology, companies and companies dependent on technology. Examples include Adobe, Apple, AWS, Bloomberg, BMW, Bosch, Capital One, Cisco, Comcast, Dell, eBay, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, GitHub, Goldman Sachs, HP, IBM, Indeed, Intel, Meta, Microsoft, Netflix, PayPal, Porsche, Progressive, Red Hat, Salesforce, Siemens, Sony, Target, Toyota, Uber, Verizon, Walmart, and many, 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 many more. The OSPO is now emerging within higher education as well, with the Sloan Foundation providing over $10 million in grants to universities investing in and investigating open source software. Where these academic OSPOs currently tend to focus on research-related software practices, some also extend into campus libraries and the university press. Considering these trends and developments, how should and how can Apera react, ensuring its commitment to 
the open source projects and communities it has supported over a decade while also helping institutions that rely on Aperio's projects and more broadly, the growing number and type of open initiatives pervasive throughout education, even if some campuses don't yet appreciate the value of open source or the reliance on it. Here are a few ways. Foundation as a surface, memberships for campuses that may be using open source software but perhaps not developing their own projects, can join the Aperio community to help create authentic communities of practice so that campuses can realize all the benefits and promises of open source software and communities. So imagine a campus that's using a lot of open source software and it wants to best engage with those communities and those projects. They're simply users, but they want to have great relationships with those projects and communities just like they have with their vendors and commercial services now. OSPO as a service. For those campuses that are developing local open source projects, can, a, can Aperio share our lessons learned, best practices and community resources to help those campuses uh, projects su succeed? So imagine our incubation process or sustainability or access to services uh, that help current Aperio projects. An OSPO as a service would provide campuses who still want to retain the management of their open source projects, but get access to expertise and resources they don't have internally. They could reach out to Aperio and become a member. Extended fiscal sponsorships. Many campuses may need more resources, capacity, or expertise to manage their open source projects. Aperio's fiscal sponsorship program can provide the business and operational services required to run healthy projects and communities. So like many of the projects you're all aware of at Aperio, we can still provide those business and operational services that a campus might not have and an open source project wouldn't have. Budgeting, accounting, uh, communications infrastructure, and so on. Sustaining members. How can Aperio better identify and engage with the organizations already using our community software? Are there other revenue options Aperio could harness, grants, partnerships, and others to provide needed funds to projects? I was surprised how many organizations are using CAS, and not just within higher ed. How can Aperio reach out to those companies that are leveraging Aperio's tools and CAS CAS's development work to help support the project. Program sponsors. Where are the opportunities for Aperio to partner with other open source and higher ed organizations around shared efforts? Research and market reports, cons consulting services, events and promotions, and other programs and initiatives could all provide revenue through sponsorship while increasing awareness of the foundation, our projects, and the value of open source and higher education. Corporate affiliates, is Aperio taking advantage of the and best supporting our commercial partners? Indeed, as an ecosystem around Aperio grows, so should, too, the opportunities for those companies investing in our projects and the foundation. Oh, and vice versa. Grants and donations are an untapped resource. As some of you may have seen, Aperio has recently brought on Josh Barron as the foundation's development officer. Some of you may remember Josh from his days at Marist College or with JSIG or as a founding Aperio board member. Most recently, Josh worked with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as a program manager focused on higher ed and, believe it or not, for a Gates organization, open source. His experience should be a great value to Aperio and also the projects. Aperio, um, or friends of Aperio, sorry. Uh, we simply are not capturing and uh, all the tremendous goodwill of our community. So many folks like you all are volunteering and committed to Sakai's success. How are we promoting and engaging uh, with those folks while also cultivating growth across campuses and with other potential uh, contributors? I honestly don't think we're providing all the opportunities we could for the Friends of Aperio program. I'd love to see that grow. 
I would like to quickly share one exciting project that I believe will serve as a foundation for much of what I just have been speaking about. Looking back at the previous uh, studies I shared at the beginning of the presentation, Red Hat's State of Enterprise Open Source, oh, sorry, Red Hat's State of Enterprise Open Source, GitHub's Octav Octaverse report, uh, Linux Foundation's Open Source Program Survey, etc. None of these include recent or comprehensive data on open source software in higher ed. A Perio, along with other open source software foundations and colleges and universities, is sponsoring a study on the perceptions, prevalence, development, and support of open source in higher education. The research will involve four areas. A survey of higher ed IT leaders to assess their current perceptions and, perceive, and the perceived value of open source software to support campuses and education. Secondly, using a significant sample of .edu EDU domains, scan campus internet and web services to determine the actual software in use and what of that software is open source. Third, scan popular code repositories to determine which are owned or managed by academic or research institutions and the level of contributions from .edu to accounts. Fourth, using current job vacancies and job descriptions, identify the critical IT job skills and experience most desired by academic and research institutions. How many of those require open source technologies and expertise? I think doing these four, uh, focusing on these four areas will give a current picture of the actual use of open source within higher education. What do campuses think about it? What are they actually using? How much open source software, even if it's hosted in the cloud or not on, or, or through some third party provider, um, what's actually are they dependent upon is open source. Third, how much development is really happening on campuses? So looking at code repositories will help us identify how much open source development is actually occurring within universities and by faculty and students or staff. And then finally, why would campuses be hiring folks with open source skills, Python, Kubernetes, whatever, unless they're running and working with open source? So I think this, these four uh, uh, research questions, if you will, uh, will give us an excellent uh, starting point for re-engaging with higher education around their use and dependency on open source. I'd like to use this opportunity to ask those listening and listening and to think about any opportunities at your campuses or with campuses you're working with to invite co-authors to join this study. The commitment would be in helping to develop survey questions, define the scope of the research, analyze the data, review and edit the final report and so on. This is not a request for funding. I'd be happy to share more for, uh, with anyone who is interested. I will say, higher ed does not appreciate the value, potential, or impact of open source software. And I think it has become um, a bit neglected and overlooked because open source is now so ubiquitous, the default, the de facto is open source. I mean, Wired Magazine claimed, quote, open source is one. Yet, now more than ever, we need to reintroduce open source to the campuses and highlight just how important it is to campuses of today, supporting core services. Think of the digital transformation activities that are going on, the effect of the pandemic, all of those resources that are being moved to digital or online, all rely on open source. This report will make the case for deeper and broader engagement between campuses and the communities of practice like Aperio that develop and deliver core open source software and services. If you can find anyone at your campus or you know folks at other campuses, it doesn't have to be campus wide. It could be the libraries, a research area, um, a specific department, anyone who might have interest and authority to join the project. I'd very much appreciate talking with you and getting an introduction. So that's it for me on a bit of uh, some of the impacts and uh, trends. Uh, in open source and higher ed and some of the things that Aperio is thinking about as we look to the future. If 
if you have any ideas or issues or inspiration, feel free to give me an email. Um, and thanks so much for your time.